Hi everybody, I'm Gavin. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to look at uh, our Form 1 Science Chapter 2 after unicellular organism and multicellular organism we will be uh, taking a look at the way that animal cells and plant cells come together and they work okay because i've told you earlier on in this chapter that we are going to have one type of animal cell which is the one that you see the usual one which is going to be uh, in uh, in the shape of uh, something like this okay and then you have the nucleus and then you have the membrane and you have all the other things inside you know the um, mitochondria and all that kind of thing animal cell normal animal cell okay and you got second type which is a plant cell rectangular in shape Right, as two layers, one is a cell wall, one is a cell membrane. Then you also have the vacuole in the middle, the, together with the chloroplast, mitochondria, huh, and all the other kind of things. The plant cell. So you have two big types, two main types of uh, cell, animal cell and plant cell. But but I told you, or not, this animal cell, although it looks like this, they will also appear in different shape and different size so that they can carry out different function. What is the example? The example is the cell in your liver, the cell in your kidney. It cannot be the same as the cell in your eye, correct not? The cell in your eye is for you to see. The cell in your uh, kidney is for you to process your urine, correct not? So it's different. Different function of the cell, but it's all one type of uh, animal cell, right? It's all animal cell. So now we're going to look at how this animal cell will come together, specialize, Okay, and become a cell that can carry out very specific function. Okay, very specific function. Okay, come. Let's go to uh, this slide here. A okay, function of cells, animal. Okay, since multicellular organisms have many cells, okay, multicellular organisms basically will be, uh, in this case, we're talking about like the humans and that kind of thing. They have many cells because they have many organs. Okay, these uh, cells inside this organ need to have uh, different structure and function. Okay, very importantly, different structure and the function in order for them to perform together. Maksudnya apa? Maksudnya, uh, your, okay, let's say your throat, your nose. You have many different type of uh, parts in your throat and nose, correct or not? For them to function, okay, the way that they should, they need to have different kind of cell in those parts. Okay, different structure in those parts, different function in those parts. So that these cells, they can come together and perform together like your mucus in your nose. Okay, what produces the mucus? That cell must work together with, let's say, the muscle of your nose. Okay, or other parts of your nose. Okay, so that is what we call performing together. Okay, performing together. Because it's not just one cell, no. It's not just you have a, you have a nose cell, then your nose cell by itself can perform, no. You must perform with other things as well. That's why we must have different structure, number one. Number two, different function, okay, to perform together. Okay, so just now I told you the animal cell from this shape, it changed into something like this, is through the process of what we call cell specialization, which is right here, cell specialization. It means that it turns this normal animal cell, or what we call a common animal cell, which is biasa lah, maksudnya biasa. Okay? Basic, basic ah, this is a better word, basic. Uh, maksudnya basic ah, huh? basic. They turn it into something more special. They call it specialized cell. Okay? So, special, special cell, apa tu? This is the name ah, huh? apa tu? Name. Cell specialization, what is this? The process. The process. Through the process of cell specialization, you make this specialized cell. Okay, you make this specialized cell. And this is what we're going to study today, the specialized cell. Okay, they have become differentiated. Okay, also we can, this can be named as the process. Okay, differentiated, specialized. Okay, to carry a particular function. That means one type of special cell, let's say the nerve cell, it can only carry out one particular function. Okay, so nerve cell is in your nervous system. Do you think the nerve cell can let you uh, 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 breathe? or let you, uh, what do you call that, feel things? Cannot, because it only works inside your nervous system. So that's what we call particular function. That means red blood cell, red blood cell is inside your blood. You cannot say the red blood cell can let you feel uh, hot water. Cannot, cannot, because the particular function of the red blood cell is just to transport oxygen. Okay, come, let's see the first type, nerve cell. Okay, it's going to look like this. Okay, it's going to have a, a bigger head. Okay, this is the head. Okay, this part is the head, uh, because this is the nucleus here, the one you see just now, that one is the nucleus, this is the nucleus. 
Okay, it's going to have an extension of these, uh, all these nerves, okay, nerve branches, so that it can go to many parts of your body. And this is, the other end will be the parts where it will collect information or collect uh, these uh, nervous impulses from other parts of the body. Let's say, let's say, uh, maybe here is your finger, your finger, okay, your finger, here is your finger, okay, here is your finger, your hand line, your finger, okay. Um, this end of the nerve will be connected to your tissues here at your hand or your finger. It will send the impulses or send the information through this neck here to this bigger part in which it will send to other parts of your body, such as, such as, such as your brain, such as your brain. So it will ask you to pull away your hand from the hot water. Okay? Pull your hand away from the hot water. Okay, that's the reason why. This nerve cell, this whole cell, this thing is the whole cell, huh? The neuron, the whole cell, huh? This is one cell, huh? The neuron itself is one cell, and this neuron will connect to each other to make what we call the nerves. The nerves. Okay? The nerves, the tissues, the nerve tissues. Okay? So you might have a different cell, it will come together to make one big bigger tissue. Okay? So nerve cell, you can call it nerve cell, or you can call it also. Neuron, called neuron. They have long thin fibers, which is the one that I've drawn you just now. The one here yang bercabang keluar. This is called the thin, long thin fibers. Long thin fibers. Okay, long thin fibers. And it carries nervous or nerve impulses. Nerve impulses along the body. Nerve impulses maksudnya apa? Nerve impulses mean maksudnya information. Information. Information such as what? Air panas lah. Kan? Air panas. If you touch air panas, it will try to send the information that the water is hot. It send it to your brain, send it to your brain, so that your brain can understand that what you are touching now is going to be hot. Okay, so that's called nervous impulse. Okay, information basically, information. Okay, after that, let's go to the next one, second type of specialized cell, which is a red blood cell, and this will be uh, uh, the main, okay, part of your red of your blood. Okay, main part. Why do I say main part? Okay, why do I say main part? Because uh, the function of your blood, uh, the function of your blood that covers your whole body, what's the function of the blood? Is to transport, okay, is to transport nutrients, okay, including things like oxygen, okay, including things like water to where? To all other, other body cells, to all other body cells. And since human beings live with oxygen, that's why I say red blood cell is the main part, the most important part in your blood. Okay, because without red blood cell, more or less you will die. More or less you will die. Okay, so let's see the structure first. Okay, red blood cell is a biconcave disc shape. Biconcave disc shape, maksudnya apa? Maksudnya, normal lah, normal, it will look like this. Normal lah, if you cut, if you cut, okay, let's, since it's a red blood cell, let's put in the red color. Normal, you will see like this ah. Okay, disc. Normal lah. From the side, nah, this is from the side. Nah, ah, pandangan sisi, ah, from the side. Nah, from the side. Okay, you will see like this. But this biconcave disc shape actually will look like this. Nampak tak? Nampak tak? Bigger on the sides, but indented or have a hole or not, uh, 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 have a, what do you call that? Uh, it's a pushed inside, okay, in the center. Okay, pushed inside in the center. This is what you will see. Now, why you want to do this? Because comparing to a flat surface like this, when you push in the surface, when you push in the surface, you are going to have what? Larger surface area. A larger surface area. And what is this larger surface area important for? K-bite question. k question in your exam. Larger surface area is important for the Transport for the transport of transport of oxygen, oxygen because this oxygen, ah, the oxygen here, oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. They want to go into the cell, but or not? They want to go into the cell, okay? And they will go through where? They dia akan masuk melalui permukaan cell, permukaan cell. So if you have the surface area which is bigger. You are going to let more of these oxygen molecules to go in. And that's fantastic because that means your red blood cell can transport 
oxygen better rather than this. So we don't want this, we want this one. Okay, we want that one. So, okay, now since the function is to transport oxygen, it also does not have nucleus. Why? Because if you see animal cell like this, small already. Some of the nucleus want to take some part inside, no. Eh? The nucleus still want to take some part inside here, no. Maybe let's say 30, 40%. This 30-40% is actually very big. Because why? Without this nucleus, you can actually tran you can actually transport more oxygen inside here, no. More oxygen, no. More oxygen. And this red blood cell is there for no other reason. Only to transfer the oxygen. So, of course, we will buangkan the, red blood, uh, the, the nucleus for us to have more space lah inside. Eh? So, what is the adaptation? Adaptation, ah, this is the question. Exam question is very important. Very important exam question. What is the adaptation? Okay. Bagaimanakah sel memudahkan? Okay. The transport of the oxygen is, number one, it increases the surface area. Okay. With larger surface area, it, it makes the transport of the oxygen easier. Number two, it has larger space. Sebab dia tidak ada nucleus. Okay. These two will be the adaptation for high High what? High efficiency. High efficiency. Okay? High efficiency of transporting oxygen. Okay, now. How about the red color of this red blood cell? The name is red blood cell. It must be red color. It can be green color. No, it can be green color. So red blood cell. But what gives this red blood cell the red color? Is what we call the hemo, hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Okay, this hemoglobin will be inside, nah, inside the red blood cell. Nah. Inside, nah, that means it's, it's a smaller pigment. Nah. Inside the red blood cell, it will give the red blood cell the red color. Plus, this hemoglobin is to transport the oxygen. Okay? There is going to be one hemoglobin here. Okay, let's say I put the hemoglobin in the red color. This is the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Okay, this is the hemoglobin. You are going to have oxygen that attach to this hemoglobin in order for it to transport oxygen. So, this hemoglobin transport oxygen molecule and it will go, it will be inside the red blood cell until it transfers to the body cell. Okay? That's why we need to have this hemoglobin in order to transport oxygen. So, it can transport oxygen and both carbon dioxide. Why? Because when um, this, uh, we are breathing, inhaling, we are actually taking in the fresh air that has oxygen. Okay? We, why we are taking this air? Because we want the oxygen for our body cell, for our body cell to survive, to, resp uh, to, uh, uh, to breathe, okay? to respire. So we need to let the blood cell transport this oxygen. But how about carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is once the blood cell has finished using Okay, the blood, uh, uh, other cells, like this other cell, uh, have finished using the oxygen. So just now, oxygen masuk, and oxygen masuk, oxygen masuk. Now, the blood has already, the blood, this cell has already finished using the oxygen. And we know that when you breathe in oxygen, you will breathe out what? You will breathe out carbon dioxide. So it must have also something to carry this carbon dioxide away. So once again, hemoglobin, hemoglobin going to bring the carbon dioxide away to other places to your heart okay to your heart jantung to change again the blood okay uh, to your jantung and then it will go to your lungs to change again oxygen come back to the cell again okay so this red blood cell uh, very common we will ask the same question we have many things to ask adaptation okay the structure okay the function okay many things to ask now third one is the muscle cell Okay, and muscle cell will be in a diagram, you can see. Very long and thin. Very long and thin. Okay? And this muscle cell, it is present where? It is present along your intestinal wall, which is your uh, this, uh, small intestine, long intestine. Why? Eh? Because you want it to move the food. Okay? Move the food from your stomach to your small intestine and to your large intestine. You need the... Um, intestine walls okay, to move that food or in other words we can call it bolus okay? you move the food to other parts of your body to other organs that's why we need the muscle cell to be there because without this muscle cell there is nothing pushing pushing the food to other parts so we need that how about heart 
Okay. So for heart, it's more special name. We call it cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle. Because your heart need to beat, correct or not? Heart need to beat. Beat, 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 beat to pump. To pump the blood. So what makes the heart be able to contract and relax and contract and relax to beat? It will be this muscle cell. This muscle cell, it will, it will pull and push and pull and push and pull and push for it to keep pumping, pumping the blood. So your uh, heart can function normally. So in scientific term, that push and pull, the push and pull, we call it what? The contract and the relax to produce the movement. And if you want to know specific name, we call it the peristaltic, peristaltic movement. Okay, for the international war, a peristatic movement. So, beginning. Beginning, you have the foot here. Then, it will push and pull and push and pull and push and pull. Then, it will move the foot. Uh, slowly, slowly, the foot will become here. Okay, move towards there. Okay, so that's what we call muscle cell. Now, done. Let's see the fourth kind of cell. Okay, good. Looks like alien. Epithelial cell. Okay, that's the fourth type of cell. Epithelial cell. Okay, so what this epithelial cell is, you can see that I, will, I want you to observe the structure first. You will be able to see that it has a lot of these kind of hairs on top. Napa kata? Hairs. Okay, these hairs, we have a name for it. We call it cilia. C-I-L-I-A. Cilia. Why do we need these, ha these hairs? Is because it, uh, this epithelial cell, it actually lines along your trachea. So if you are not familiar with the breathing mechanism, you have a nose. Okay, the mouth, okay, you are going to have a, 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 this uh, a pipe, okay, we call it the wind pipe, okay, the pipe, okay, and then you're going to have uh, this part where it will branch out and go into your lungs, okay, branch out and go into your lungs. So, this part, uh, this part where the uh, air passes through, we call it trachea, this is the part where we call it trachea. So, this trachea is actually going to be along the whole thing uh, along okay, the whole trachea there will be epithelial cell along the whole trachea okay for it to uh, to line this thin layer of hair okay so trachea we call it respiratory tract okay it has a thin layer of hair called cilia okay and also it covers the outer surface of the body and line the surface of the organ okay to line the surface of the organ basically to protect the organ because you're going to have this cilia which will catch the bad things that you don't want okay so it will protect that organ like your trachea, if you are breathing in, a, let's say, sawdust. Talk about sawdust, sawdust. Okay, sawdust is uh, when you uh, chop the wood, na, the wood. Na. Gergaji, 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 gergaji. Okay, uh, how do we do gergaji? Okay, gergaji. When you uh, saw, when you saw the wood, okay, you are going to have a lot of the tiny, tiny dust. Okay, these kind of things when they muscle your body or your respiratory tract is not really good for your body. So what happens is you will have this cilia, all this tiny hair. For it to move this sawdust that go into your body, it will try to move this sawdust away from where it should not be. Let's say your lung. Okay, because if you muscle your lung, it's going to be very bad news. So your cilia will try to uh, prevent this from happening. Okay. Okay, that's all. Now, red, white blood cell. Now, in your blood. At, Apart from what a red blood cell, you also have something called the white blood cell. Yeah, this white blood cell, and this white blood cell is not uh, is not uh, uh, going to transfer oxygen, but this white blood cell is going to help you to fight against diseases, viruses, bacteria, germs, or the kind of thing. Okay, so it says destroy bacteria and protects the body. That's the function. Okay, and it does not have a fixed shape. By the way. White blood cell, what you learn is only this type. No, there are going to be many, many types of white blood cell you learn after this. When you go to home 4, home 5, biology, you're going to learn more types of white blood cell. So, because they have different type of bacteria and different type of germs and different type of viruses that go into your body, what it means is you need to have different kind of white blood cell to attack, to attack different kind of virus, different kind of virus, okay not? Because you cannot say that, okay, let's say, uh, uh, flu, flu, okay, flu. You cannot ask the white blood cell that attack the flu to attack the coronavirus, right not? Of course, it will die. Of course, it will kalah. The white blood cell will kalah. Because the white blood cell was supposed to attack the flu, the flu virus. 
But then now you try to make it attack something else, attack coronavirus. Of course, it won't work. Right? Because it's not, it's, there's not the function of the white blood cell. It doesn't have the shape, it doesn't have the structure, it doesn't have the property to fight against the coronavirus. So that's why we have different type of white blood cell. We must have different type of white blood cell for it to destroy many different type of bacteria, destroy many different type of these um, viruses, germs, all that kind of thing. Okay, So it does not have a fixed shape. Okay, So just now red blood cell, biconcave this shape. White blood cell does not have a fixed shape. Okay, does not have a fixed shape. Okay, number six. Now, reproductive cell is the name for two types of cell. Number one, in the male, in the male, we will call it the sperm cells. Okay, in the male, we call it the sperm cells. Okay, if you want to see it clearly, the sperm cells is going to look like this. It's going to have a head, okay, a neck, okay, a neck, and then a tail. Okay, sperm cells. Then ovum is going to look like something like this, okay? Something like this, okay? Ovum, okay? It looks like an egg. So ovum for the female, sperm cell for the males, okay? So the ovum is what we usually also call the egg, lah, huh? The egg, the egg. So the sperm will fertilize the ovum to make a fetus, uh, make a baby, okay? So sperm cells that swim towards the ovum inside a woman's body or inside a female's body to uh, create uh, a fetus. Okay, so what happens is, since the sperm cell belong to the male, that means uh, it belong to who? The father lah, ha? because uh, male, the father ma, okay, so it will carry the genetic information. And genetic information is what? The DNA. DNA, we learned this before, we call it what? Deoxyribonucleic acid. This DNA contains what? Contains the information of um, your father. Right? Things like what? The colour of your hair, colour of your eyes, your size of your nose, the uh, the length of your fingers, the tone of your skin, that kind of thing. Genetic information. Ovum contains the genetic information of the mother. Of course, one father, the other mother. So, ovum will contain whatever genetic information of the mother. Okay? Like what? Like the the height. Okay? And uh, everything I said earlier on just now also. The hair colour, the hair length and all that. So, these two types of genetic information both the father plus the mother, both these two types of genetic information will create one fetus. Okay, will create one fetus. And um, then you will have your children. So your children will look a bit like you. Your children will look a bit like you, but not completely like you. Okay? Uh, sometimes, maybe, uh, that's why you can see, sometimes people say, oh, you look like your father. Oh, you look like your mother. Oh, oh you look like who? You look like who? Uh, this is the reason, because of this genetic information is being shared. So you will look like either your father more or your mother more or you will look balanced. 50% your father, 50% your mother also is possible. Okay, so we are not sure about how uh, likely you are going to look like your dad, look like your mom. But the reason or what causes this is because of the genetic information. Okay, so that's it. Yeah. Okay, now let's look at the k question. Okay, solving k for animal cell. So, uh, okay, so you can attempt this question but we are going to go through the answer now. Okay, humans have blood flowing from head to toe in our bodies. Would it be correct to regard blood as a type of cell? So they're asking you, as a type of cell. So they're asking you, adakah darah merupakan sejenis cell? They're asking you that. But let's be careful. It's asking you a type of cell. So now let's break it down. Inside blood, what do we learn this now? Two types. Number one, red blood cell. Number two, white blood cell. But not just that, no. Not just that, no. There are other things such as plasma. Okay? Plasma in your body. So that means what? Darah ni bukan satu jenis sel. Ia merupakan satu campuran berbagai-bagai jenis sel. Correct not? We are different type of cell that come together to make a mixture of, diff, uh, of, of, uh, of a different uh, cells to become one type of tissue of what we call blood. So, answer maksudnya apa? Blood is not a cell. Okay? Not a cell. Okay? And it is a tissue. But a tissue. But a tissue. Okay? A tissue. Why? Because it contains different, it contains different type of cell. Contains different type of cell. Such as what? Such as? Such as red blood cell, white blood cell, plasma, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, it's bukan sejenis cell, tapi sekumpulan atau satu campuran cell. Okay? To make a tissue.
Okay, so this is kebab question lah. Okay, people will be trapped when they see a type of cell. Oh, blood. Oh, I think blood is only red color. Nothing else. Very simple. Does not look like the kidney. Does not look like the lung. Does not look like the heart. Very simple thing. I think should be one cell. Then they hantam one cell. Then they're going to get wrong. Okay, so this is kebab question. Okay, now, now after that, that means animal done. Animal done. So we will move into plant. We will move into plant. Now, the first type of plant cell you will see is what we call the epidermal cell. The epidermal cell. And this epidermal cell basically means on the surface. Okay? Maksudnya on the surface. Pada permukaan, pada permukaan, uh, uh, this organ, organ of the plant. Okay? Surface. Such as the what? The leaves. Such as the what? The stem. Okay? There will be epidermal cell. And this epidermal cell will look like this inside the diagram. It will be uh, in the shape of a plant cell, rectangular in shape, and it's going to stack side by side. Okay, and see flat and has a large vacuole. Okay, going to have a large vacuole. Why? Because they store, they store a lot of uh, food. They store a lot of nutrients in the form of what? In a starch, in the form of starch. Okay, that's what they're going to store. And it has a waxy cuticle layer. Do you see this one or not? Do you see this one? Do you see this layer? This layer? This layer? This layer is what we call the waxy cuticle layer. Waxy cuticle layer. Why? Because when it is waxy, yeah, when it is waxy, yeah, it's, wax is like what your candle. Lah, when it's candle. What it means is it makes it waterproof. Waterproof. Okay? Makes it waterproof. 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 That's why you can see sometimes, huh, if you drop a drop of water on a leaf, huh, it will not absorb one, no. The entire drop of water will just flow down, okay? Flow away from the leaf. Why? Because it has this waxy cuticle layer. That's why you can see in the bright sun, uh, maybe you are able to see the leaf. It is actually very shiny a bit, no? Very, a bit of shiny, shiny, very smooth, very shiny. The reason why it's like that is because it has this waxy cuticle layer. And since it's waterproof, the function of this layer is to what? To reduce the water loss. Why? Because we know that this on the top of the leaf, on the top of the leaf, then there is going to be water droplets inside here, which will, what happen? What will happen? Evaporate. The water will evaporate. And what happens when it evaporate? The leaf will become dry. The leaf will become dry. So we don't want the leaf to be dry. Of course, we don't want the leaf to be dry. So what happens is we must reduce the water loss so that there is going to be more water that stay inside the leaf. Stay inside the vacuoles, perhaps. Okay, so it won't, so it won't dry out. It won't wilt. Okay. Now, but you must know, since it's the top of the of the leaf, you must know there is something else. What we call the what we call the the matahari, the sun, and the sun gives you what sunlight. And when we're talking about sunlight, when we're talking about plants, what is it for? It's for photosynthesis. That is why we need the top layer to be transparent. Okay, it's waxy but it's transparent to allow the what? To allow the sunlight to pass through into, into the chloroplast. Into the chloroplast. Pass through into the chloroplast to uh, absorb the sunlight to make for to make for photosynthesis. Chloroplast. Because inside the chloroplast they have what? Chlorophyll. Okay? Chlorophyll. And it will allow this photosynthesis to happen. Okay? Imagine, uh, imagine if this entire layer here. Is not transparent. Uh. It's like plastic bag like that. Uh, huh? The whole thing okay, is going to be uh, the sunlight cannot pass through. What happens is the cell underneath here all will die, you know, because without chloroplast to absorb the sunlight, what happens? No food. No food happens, die. Okay, so we must have it transparent. Okay, now that's all for epithelial cell. Now let's uh, epidermal cell. Now let's go to this, the palisade cell. Okay, now just now the epidermal cell on the surface of the, of the leaf it is laying down flat now you go to the next layer the next layer in the leaf what you will call, what you will see is what we call the palisade cell palisade cell and this palisade cell same is going to have the structure of the long rectangular plant cell same like any other plant cell but it is going to stand vertically uh, diri, uh, uh, this uh, ver uh, vertically vertically for this uh, palisade cell and inside here, can you see the white color spots? The white color spots, the one here, the white color spots. Do you know what are all these? These are all actually the chloroplasts. The chloroplasts, the parts of the plant, the chloroplasts. Why? Because this palisade cell is underneath, underneath the epidermal cell. 
Once the sunlight shines through into the leaf, it is going to reach the, the palisade cell. And when it's at the palisade cell, that is the best part or the best location for it to absorb, absorb the sunlight. So the chloroplast will be there to contain a lot of chlorophyll and chlorophyll in order to this is the function absorb sunlight for it to carry out photosynthesis to make food to survive so that the leaf can be healthy yeah and continue living okay so that's the first layer second layer now let's go to the third okay let's see what the third is uh no no more so what else you learn a root hair cell now root hair cell is going to be in the roots in the roots now this is going to look like a root hair cell in this diagram and what happens is it is very long and very thin as if you are looking at an actual root you can see the root huh? very fibrous roots okay long thin okay same as what is saying here long thin extension which provides what why is it long and thin why is it long and thin is because when it is long like this you're going to have a lot of surface area for what to go in you know just now remember the biconcave this shape the red that cell why do we want the, the biconcave this shape why because you allow the what the the oxygen to go in but now what do we want what does the pun what does the root has a one we want the water we want the nutrients to go in of the roots that is where the uh, the plant obtain the water from that is why it must have the eye surface area number one it must have the water of uh, to obtain the water and the nutrient by absorbing it in the cell huh imagine okay imagine if your root hair cell is going to be like this huh? like this huh? short short one huh? short 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 short, huh? short. But the water is down here, no. Water down here, no. In underground, the water here, no. How are you going to let the roots reach the water? How? Cannot, eh? So you cannot absorb. But if you have long, fibrous roots, see not? Easily, easily, it will touch the water. And that's what we want. Okay? And that's what we want. Okay, now, number four. Gut cells. Two gut cells. Okay, so let's wrap this off first. Now, two gut cells surround the opening. Okay, so this is what happens at the where? Bottom, at the bottom of the leaf. Just now the epidermal on the top, now is at the bottom. Is what we call the gut cells. And what this gut cell do is, it control something we call the stoma. This is the stoma. Okay, this part is the stoma. We want to control the stoma. This is the gut cell, the one in the green color. Huh? This is the gut cell. Okay, this is the gut cell to control the one in the blue color, which is the stoma. Okay, the green control the blue. Okay, so you are going to have two stoma, uh, two gut cell. Number one, gut cell. Number two, gut cell. Number one, gut cell. Number two, gut cell. In order to go to, uh, uh, to what do you call that? To uh, control one stoma. Okay, to control the opening. And what does this opening do? This opening actually underneath the leaf is for what? To regulate the gas exchange. Why? Because where does the carbon dioxide go in? Where does the oxygen come out? It will go through the stomata. It will go through the stomata. Okay? So, when it open, you will be able to exchange the gas. Nah. Carbon dioxide go in, oxygen come out, oxygen go in, carbon dioxide come out. When it's closed, what happened? On this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. When it's closed, what happened? Nampak ke tak? Tak ada stoma. Tak ada stoma. Tutup kedai. Tutup kedai. What happens here? The gases, which is the carbon dioxide, the oxygen, cannot exchange. They cannot exchange. So this is, uh, this will make this, um, the leaves, all the gases, the water wafer, will stay inside the leaf. So you must have gut cell, which is this one. This one to protect and to uh, control how the cell, uh, how the leaf function okay so that's all you need to learn okay for the plant cell nothing much now okay i believe this is the last last part yes so okay what question let's finish okay question the diagram shows the layers of this specialized plant cell by the way this is the best part i want to show you number one number one here is what we call the waxy cuticle layer number one if you see very carefully it's pointing towards this layer in what in which in which the name in which the name we call it what we call it the waxy waxy cuticle cuticle layer okay for number one which is the one here after that the one here yang berbaring yang berbaring what do we call this call this the epidermal the epidermal cell 
Why? Because it is on top. Okay, it is on top. This is the top of the leaf. This is the top of the leaf. This is the bottom of the leaf. So, epidermal cell. After that, what happens? Palisade cell. Palisade cell. This is don't need to learn. Okay, you uh, it's not in your syllabus. We call it the uh, spongy mesophyll. Okay, but it's not important. Ah, then you have the what here also epidermal. Okay, but you have more importantly what here? What is here? Just now, what do learn? Gut cells. Okay, gut cells to control the number six stomata, stomata. Okay, so they're asking you why are layers three and four arranged in such a way? Ah, why does arrange three and four arrange in such a way? So if you see number three or not, why it arrange in such a way? Very close to each other, stack side by side each other, a lot of profit. Why? Number three is because they want to maximize, maximize the absorption, the absorption of sunlight, of sunlight. For what? For photo, for photosynthesis. For photosynthesis, it maximizes the absorption of the sunlight. So more sunlight, okay, or in this color, okay, more sunlight is going to shine into the palisade cell. Now number four, why? Why it is now just now I say very close to each other, huh? Now the opposite, opposite, opposite. Why it is so longer, longer? See now, empty spaces, empty spaces, empty spaces. Why? Eh? Why? Because you want it to. Maximize, maximize the movement of water, movement of water, movement of water vapor inside the leaf. Because there's going to be water vapor inside the leaf. Okay, and then the water vapor needs to move around. If you stack it like the palisade cell, how the water move around? The water, no water, 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 water molecule, water molecule. You have to move around. So you must have in between. You must have the the cell, which is the spongy mesophyll, the cell. Ah, then you have empty space. See for the for the water molecule to move ah uh, in and out and in and out like that. Okay, so maximize the movement of water vapor for this layer number four. Okay, so that's all. It's just uh, ask you to make observation and uh, think about the reason why. And this is actually a very famous question. They ask you about the absorption of the sunlight and the movement of the water vapor. Very famous question. Okay, so I think that's all for this uh, video. We have uh, successfully covered all the specialized cell for the animal, all the uh, specialized cell for the plant. We go through the K-Bat question. Okay, so uh, we will see uh, when we can go through to the next part of this chapter again. Then we'll go to revision. Okay. So remember, go through again, look at your notes, make the necessary notes, the necessary drawing that you need, okay? So that when it's time for your exam, it's easier for your revision, okay? When it's uh, this uh, Ujian Pengar Pertama, it's easier for you to revise, okay? So remember, study smart, study fast, and you'll be number one. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.